بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا ذل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نضل أو نضل أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we worship Him. We seek His tawfiq, we seek His, his, his assistance. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq to learn that which is beneficial to us. And to give us the tawfiq to apply it. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una. Wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma. Fa innahu man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi al-deen. Allahumma faqihna fi al-deen. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night, the 25th of Rajab, of the year 1438 since Hijrat al-Nabiyya sallallahu wa sallam, that translates into the 22nd of April of the, of the Gregorian year 2017. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make it a blessed night. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make all the brothers and sisters young or adult, who are with us here physically in the masjid, or who may be listening live to us, or watching us live, to make them mubarakin, to make them blessed in themselves, in their families, in everything that belongs to them, Allahumma ameen. With that said, brothers and sisters, um, we continue our commentary, like we said, on this topic, on this text of Aqidah called or titled Al-Aqidah Al-Tahawiyyah, titled after its author, Imam Abu Ja'far Al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, a scholar of Madhab Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala. Obviously, we started this halaqa, if you wish, or this series of commentary on this Aqidah many, many weeks ago. And alhamdulillah, by the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa I do see a lot of new faces today. And, uh, you know, I just remembered that we have a mailing list. Um, if you want to be notified and get, you know, updates from us, uh, feel free to write your email and this. If I, feel free to write your email address and we'll add it to the mailing list. It's only typically once a month, once a week. Um, so, if, for those who haven't been with us, uh, you know, and I do apologize, we typically have, we broadcast the slides, I do have slides uh, on the screen, but subhanAllah, qaddar Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al, this is what Allah decreed, and he did what he wanted, subhanahu wa ta'ala, I forgot the Chromecast that links, that is the glue that links everything together, subhanAllah. Uh, but what we've been doing is we have slides and we... Uh, divided this text of Aqidah into statements, and we even number them. So we're going statement by statement, right? One after the other, and we reach the 40, 41st, 41, 41st statement last Saturday, and we're going to continue talking about this statement today. Uh, again, I do apologize, I typically you know, put the uh, sl uh, slide on the screen. This is a very important statement. Imam Abu Ja'far rahimahullah ta'ala he said وَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَبْدُهُ الْمُصْطَفَى وَنَبِيُّهُ الْمُجْتَبَى وَرَسُولُهُ الْمُرْتَضَى The English translation of this statement is and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his chosen slave 
Who is his referring to? Allah. Yani, he is the chosen slave of Allah. And that Muhammad وسلم, is his chosen slave, his selected prophet, and his messenger with whom he is pleased, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said that in this statement, Imam Abu Ja'far shifted into a new topic. So the 40 statements before, 40 statements before, were all about talking about the tawheed of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. We said he talked about the oneness of Allah azza wa jal. In all the categories, we talked about the attributes, the names of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, and that he had those attributes since ever, and will have them forever. And we talked in you know, a lot of details about all of that. And then he finished that by saying, we believe in all of that. Remember, he said, we believed in all of that. And we said, this belief should be really the belief of the heart, not just by talk, by the you know, speech of the tongue. It is so easy to say, I believe that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. But doing and practicing that is more, or, or the harder part of it, right? So easy, easy to say. But what, is, what about the practice? Do we actually do according to it? Or do we do what contradicts it? I say, La ilaha illallah, and then I ask somebody else. I say, La ilaha illallah, he is the al-ghani, right? He is the razza, and then I ask somebody else for rizq. Doesn't work, right? So, amanna bi thalika, we believe in all of that. We say that this is a belief from the heart, that the practice of the limbs and of the organs actually support it and do according to it. In this statement, the 41st, we said this is now the switch into the next topic, which is the talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we all know, it's no secret to anybody, that this is part of our aqidah, right? As a matter of fact, a fundamental and important pillar, basic fund- fund foundation of our deen is our belief in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this statement, he started to talk about him and about his attributes, about his characteristics, alayhi salatu wassalam. And for those who were with us last week, so I'm going to go fairly quickly, right? Not very, not very, uh, not, not a quick summary that, that we typically do because of its importance. And I'm not going to go, obviously, repeat the last, uh, you know, halaqa, but I'm going to go somewhere in between, right? I'm going to go and repeat in some details what we talked about last week and then continue with Allah Ta'ala. I hope the time will help us. So he, we said, we noticed that Imam Abu Jafar said, wa inna Muhammadan. He didn't say, wa anna Muhammadan. Typically in the Arabic language, if you were to start something new, you would say, wa anna Muhammadan. Right? He said, wa inna Muhammadan abduhu al-Mustafa. And we said the reason for that is that this is a statement that links to back to the second statement. So we're on the 41st statement. Notice, we are in the 41st statement. But this statement actually links back to what he started by saying in the second statement. And subhanAllah, I wish we could broadcast and you know to, for, for you to be able to see. But qadr Allah wa masha'afah. What did the Imam Abu Ja'far start his text of Aqidah by saying back in the second statement? He said, نَقُولُ فِي تَوْحِيدِ اللَّهِ we say with regard to Tawheed of Allah, Mu'taqideen, holding as our creed and belief, Bitawfiqillah, due to the guidance to correctness granted by Allah, Inna Allah, Wahidun la sharika la, that Allah is one having no partner. And then he talked about that for the next 39 statements. Now he's linking back to it and giving the other half of it. And saying now, like he said, Inna Allah wahidun la sharika la. Now he's saying, Wa inna Muhammadan abduhu al-mushtaba, Mustafa. Wa rasuluhu al-mushtaba, wa nabiyuhu al-mushtaba, wa rasuluhu al-murtaba. Yani this wow that is at the beginning of the statement, Wa inna Muhammadan is the glue. Right? Like we say in the English language, wow translates into and. Right? So you say something and something. This and, what is the purpose of that and? It links the two statements together. The two parts together. Likewise in here, 
this wow wa inna muhammadan yani and muhammad this and is linking to where you don't start the statement by saying and like this right a new statement new topic completely independent topic you don't start with and do you it has to be something that is linking to something before so the reason for this is he is linking to that statement wa inna inna allah wahid la sharika la that allah is one having no partner wa inna muhammad and muhammad is his servant alayhi salatu was salam yani in other words brothers to just to make it simpler and make it stick in your mind as if an imam abu jafar rahimahullah ta'ala is saying we say with res- with regard to tawhid of allah holding as our creed and believe that allah is one having no partner and we say with regard to tawhid of allah that muhammad is his chosen slave does that make sense yani both of them both statements are from the tawhid of allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that is why he's linking back to it imagine that goes back 39 statements backward we dial back and link it together And we said this is because the Imam Abu Ja'far is drawing the attention of the Muslim ummah that like we believe in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal that he talked for so many statements about likewise it is incumbent and it is part of the belief to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these two statements these two testimonies are inseparable one does not work without the other Yani if somebody comes and say and there are people who do that by the way claim to be Muslim there are people who come and say I believe that oh there's only one god they like Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam I don't know about that they say it's not in the Quran right that like, we say that doesn't work you cannot believe in the oneness of Allah and then deny the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Likewise you cannot believe in the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and deny the oneness of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So we say they are inseparable and to for this belief to be correct and the tawhid to be correct you have to bear testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and this is what we talked about for 39 statements or actually 40 statements and then to bear likewise testimony that Muhammad in particular is is a prophet is the prophet of Rasul of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so this belief in him alayhi salatu was salam is mandatory it's not optional it's not recommended it's mandatory for that belief to to be accepted by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala طيب we said why is the belief in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is part of the tawhid Remember we just said that uh, Imam Abu Ja'far is saying that we believe in the tawhid of Allah Azza wa Jalla or with regard to the tawhid that there is no one except Allah that Allah is one with no partners and that Muhammad is his selected or chosen servant right to the end of the statement why is the belief in prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam part of the tawhid of Allah we said there are two reasons first of all we say that when we say aqeedah it is actually it encompasses